It's a wizard or serpentine spirit. I don't know whether it is marine. Any kingdom of the devil that have been operating in your family today, they will bow in the name of Jesus Christ. This is our own generation. And by the grace of God, the God who helped our forefathers make them to subdue kingdom, the same God also today is going to empower us. We also we are going to subdue kingdoms. Am I talking to somebody there? You just get ready. Make sure you are listening very well and make sure you are taking note if possible and make sure you pray over them because we cannot finish the prayer. We are going to pray on these items here. You have a few minutes here, those two hours before we go now. The two hours is not enough. Make sure you allow the world to sink deep into you and now you now apply the word into your life. I pray the word of God will miss with faith in you in Jesus' name. This is what helps, you know, faith in those days, the faith of our fathers, the faith we are talking about, the faith. We have seen it in the book of that Hebrews. I told you everything about faith. Get to that book of Hebrew, you get it. You see, he divines faith for us. What is faith? He told us what faith is. Then he gave us a series of examples of faith. The time is not there, but let's quickly go. What do you mean when we talk about faith? We have been talking about um, uh, some time now. I've been talking about, talking about prayer, telling you principles of prayer, conditions for prayer. I've been telling you to find a place of prayer in your life, in your family, in your place of work. Get a place. Make sure you have a time with God. That was why I, you know, I, I divided us into how many groups? Can you remember? Eight groups. Every three, three hours. I say you must be one of them. Have time. Every three, three hours. There are some of our brethren by 3 a.m. in the night. They pray on our behalf. And 6 a.m. again, you see other groups coming up. 9 a.m., the same thing, 12 noon. And so on and so forth. We have divided ourselves into eight groups. Make sure you are one of those eight groups. And if your work will not you know, make you to be able to join the eight groups, make sure you create at least one hour for yourself that you have with God. And by the grace of God, your time of prayer, nothing will disturb it in Jesus' name. Some people are sleeping. I don't know why. Maybe it's public holiday. That's why they are sleeping. Now, I told you, for you to walk with God is by faith. Let's see Hebrews chapter 11. Let's take verse 1. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You have not seen it, but you believe it. You not see it as if you are pregnant. And definitely those things will come to pass. Aha. Verse 6. But without faith, without faith, what do you see in your Bible? It is impossible to please God. So this faith we are talking about is something very, very important. Without it, you cannot please God. You have heard about people who please God. It is because they have faith. And you heard about, let's say, uh, um, people like Noah, people like Enoch, people like Abraham. You have heard about Sarah, you have heard about Moses. You have a, many of them in the scriptures like that. They walked with God by faith. And because they walked by God, you know, with God by faith, they pleased God. Just as if we have it in verse 5 about somebody there, he said, By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and he was not found because God translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that, what do you see there? That he did what? He pleased God. That means he walked with faith, by faith with God. That was why he was able to please God. I pray today, for us to also to please God, we must have what we call what? Faith. And I pray you will have faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It is when you hear the word of God that spring faith will come in. And I pray this morning as we hear the word of God, faith will come in. I say faith will spring in into your life. Faith of our Father is still a living faith. He is still here, the same faith, the same thing. That was what helped them 
the same faith also will help us. With faith this morning, you are getting your miracle. I say with faith this morning, that woman that is expecting a miracle baby, I will double it for you. God will give you twins. Yeah. And those of you who are pregnant by the grace of God, all of you, you will deliver safely in Jesus' name. Yeah. Any strange hand that wants to touch you and your baby, that hand will dry up in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Now, you see, uh, this is what helped our fathers to have testimony and breakthrough in area in all areas of their life that the same thing also applies to us you want breakthrough you need faith you want to be successful you need faith in god you want miracle you need faith you have to trust him you have to depend on him and i'm telling you no one has ever put his trust in him and that person is disappointed you will not be number one i said god is going to use you I will share the message into three. Number one part is the operation of faith. We want to see operation of faith. Faith is something active, very, very active. It's very positive. It's always in action. Faith is always in action. You see it now. Let's go, now. Let's go back now to the passage that we have read before. In that Hebrews word, 11, let us take from verse 33. What do you see there? Let's go now. Are you there? Hebrews what? 11, 33. Who through faith, our fathers, through faith, what did they do with their faith? Subdue kingdoms. You see it in action. They have faith. When the Lord told the children of Israel, you are going to possess the land of the Canaanite, the Perizzite, you are going to take possession of everything. You know what happened? They believe. Those who didn't believe, they miss it. You remember Caleb and Joshua. They say, we are well able. I'm telling you, I am well able. Some people are still sleeping. They have not woken up. I say, I am well able to take the land. I don't know what do you want God to do for you. You want to take possession of something. You want God to do to use you to do great and mighty things. Don't you must be very, very positive because faith is active, it's not passive, it's not dull. You see, faith is always in motion, walking. You see, the subdue kingdom that is what the Bible told us. Our fathers in faith, they subdue kingdom through it, not only kingdom. Let's see the rot righteousness. I can see righteousness being wrought in your life today. Can you give me better? Amen. Obtain promises, top the mouth of the lion, quench the violence of fire, escape the edge of the sword, out of weakness we are made strong, wax valiant in fight, torn to flight the armies of the aliens. Women receive their dead raised to life again. Do you see action there? Do you see the movement there? We'll just take a few of them one by one. You see, number one, what do you see there? The quench, you see, uh, let me take, okay, the number one, subdue kingdoms. And don't forget, quickly, let me remind you what Jesus Christ told us. He said, if, if you see me doing anything, you are going to do greater things. You see, what am I saying is, if those our forefathers, if God will use them through faith, if they could do mighty things, if they could do great things, you, me, we are going to do greater things. Amen. Give me living amen there. Amen. In St. John chapter 14, quickly, St. John chapter 14, I take verse 12, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, this is Jesus Christ talking to me, he's talking to you, he that believeth in me, I believe in Jesus. Can you say it to yourself? My brethren here, can I hear you louder? I believe in Jesus. And listen, now listen to those who believe in Jesus. Let's hear from what the Lord Jesus Christ said. That anyone that believe in me, hallelujah. I said hallelujah. 
Are you still there? I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. Listen, he has not finished. And he added extra. Your miracle more today. Addition to your miracle. Addition to your breakthrough. Multiplication to your blessings. Greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my father. Do you see that? That means what our forefathers have done, the faith of our fathers, what we have seen them, what Moses did, Joshua mentioned them, Abraham mentioned them. You come to the new, uh, 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 the new Testament, what our Lord Jesus Christ himself said it, he promised us, who wrote, you know, he promised. This is a promise from our Lord Jesus Christ himself. He said what he did, we are going to do greater, even greater than what Peter, Paul mentioned all of them. We have that promise and i pray this promise will be fulfilled in our life and in our generations in jesus name what do you see there and he said subdue kingdoms look up here do you know there are some forces that are fighting against you whether consciously or unconsciously, whether you know, whether you don't know, but I'm telling you there are kingdoms, there are nations that are fighting against individuals, including you. That is why the Bible told us, open your Bible quickly to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 1. In the book of Jeremiah, God told them then, say Jeremiah, look this day, chapter 1, verse 10, he says, see, this day I have set thee, over what do you see in your Bible? Open your Bible, open your Bible and see it. I want you to see it so that when you are praying, you don't limit yourself, you pray with understanding based on faith. I've told you, Jesus Christ has promised us greater things. He said, Whatever you have seen, that is small, you can do greater one. And I'm telling you, today is your day. Yeah. Are you there now? Jeremiah 1 10. What do you see? See, I have said thee this day. I have this day said thee over the what do you see there? Nations and over. Do you see? He said, I've given you power over them. I've given you authority over them. We we have the physical. We have the physical nation. We have the physical kingdoms. We also have the spiritual. Maybe some of you didn't know. All of you, look at me again. You see, you see canal along Lagos, along the suburb. You see rivers. You see the seas there. Even some streams. Do you know there are kingdoms in all those places I mentioned? There are some of you, maybe you have heard that somebody takes them maybe to the marine and when they get to the marine, he, you know, he makes some incantation. He merely makes some incantation. He does discover that they just find themselves in a very big city. Very big city. <laughs> he looks as he said, this is great. Everything is just going on like normal human beings uh, society. But that is the kingdom of marine. I don't know, maybe you have heard about people say they go to the cemetery in the night. When they get to the cemetery in the night, they just find themselves in another world. That is another kingdom, another nation. Now, those who, who are witches or wizards, they will tell you too that in their midst, you see them sleeping here, you may see them like a small boy here, a small girl here, but in the night when they wake up, they find themselves, maybe it may be an aeroplane that will come and pick them. It can be some big, big, this is somebody is very poor here. You see him now, a big, you know, this may be a limousine. It may be a special jet that come and pick that child or pick that woman to their meeting in their kingdom over there. You see, these are nations and kingdoms in the air. They are there. Inside the ground here, they are there. In the well, they are there. Everywhere. It may be under a tree. Let me tell you, there are some trees. There are some trees that is a world on its own because powers of darkness has taken charge so that's why god said now my son my children are giving you power 
Hallelujah. I thought somebody would say amen then. And my Lord Jesus Christ knew this when he also said it. In the book of Luke chapter 10 verse 19, he told us, he said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpent and scorpion and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall be enemies. He knew these kingdoms are operating and I pray today you will arise. Look at it very well. Look at that passage. Let's go back again to that passage. What are you going to do to these demonic kingdoms? These kingdoms of idol, these kingdoms of serpentine world, this kingdom of witchcraft, of familiar spirit. Let, what do we do to it? What do you see in your Bible? To do what? Oh, you are not there again. To root out. All of you say to root out. To pull down. And to destroy. And to throw down. To build and to plan. That is it. Power has been given to you to do what? To root them out. And I pray for you today. Every satanic kingdom that are troubling you, troubling your home, will be rooted out. They will be pulled down. Through the Holy Ghost, they will be destroyed. And you will throw down all evil altars. All those altars, all those shrines where they are troubling you, from the marine kingdom where they are troubling you, all those serpentine spirits, the power of the Holy Ghost will use the sword of the Holy Ghost to cut them down. Yeah. Are you ready this morning? Yeah. You remember that is why you are here, that is why you must pay attention. This kingdom that are troubling your family, you may not know them, you may not see them physically, but you are seeing the hand work. You are seeing their oppression in your business. You are seeing how they are troubling your family. That is why you must arise. Don't just sit down. You need the faith. I pray God will build you up. God will increase your faith. You will arise. You will do something. You will not just sit down and be crying or sit down and be saying, where am I going now? Oh, I am tired. Let me go and kill myself. If you kill yourself, you are going straight to hell. God didn't say you should kill yourself. God said, I have set you over. Jesus Christ said, I have given you power over there. What else again do you want God to do for you? After I have made all these provisions for you, I pray you will arise today. Yeah. Am I talking to somebody? I say you will arise today. Yeah. And you will see, it is not only to subdue the kingdom, to destroy the kingdom, to root out the kingdom. The Bible told us, look, look at another thing again. Look at it again. Are you there with me? Quench the violence of fire. There are some of you, fire is burning. Burning your business. Fire is burning your family. You and your husband, there's no relationship. There's problem. The man, something is working against the man. There is fire burning in your home. Today, Heavenly Father will quench that fire. I remember quickly what the Bible told us in the book of Isaiah chapter 43. If you have your Bible there, Isaiah chapter 43. The Bible assured us. Hallelujah. I'm waiting for you. Open your Bible there. Are you there now? You didn't answer me. I say, are you there? When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle against thee. Do you see these promises? These, even these our brethren in those days, they have no access to all these promises we have access today. You remember Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. Do you, can you still remember that story? I'm asking you now, answer me. Yes. King Nebuchadnezzar thought he has power. The then emperor, that there is nothing he cannot do. No man can stop him. No man can query him. Because these young men refused to bow down to the idol of Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar now decided to ruin them, to destroy them. I'm telling you, any power that wants to destroy you will be disappointed. He thought the fire could do that, you know, for him. Maybe some of you are passing through fire now. I command that fire will be quenched. I pray that fire will not have any effect on your life. The fire may be burning, but the fire will not have any effect on your life. 
The man decided then, because I'm a king, he has every power. And those young people, you see, these are men of faith. You see, they say, we know the God we are serving. You say, Nebuchadnezzar, we are not going to bow down to your idol. We know that is faith. I pray you will have faith, confidence with this God. Am I talking to somebody there? Believe, trust in, depend on him. I'm telling you, he's not going to disappoint you. The children, they have not seen God before. They believe God. They believe the word of God. They say, we are not going. The Nebuchadnezzar say, okay, you are not going to do that. Oh, he, this man got irritated. Your enemy who gets irritated will just kill himself. I don't know whether you are there. The man got angry. He said, now the fire is hot. Make it hotter. Seven times. Let me tell you, don't work for the devil. I'm canceling you. If you are here, you have not given your life to the Lord, or maybe you are an agent of the devil, you are a witch, you are a wizard, you are hearing me afar, or on, on the internet, don't go on errand for the devil, because you may lose your life. His servant quickly did that, what the master told them. You know what happened? They, these are our brethren. They, cashed, they caught them, they rope, put rope, tied them heavily, and then they threw them with anger inside the fire unfortunately it was those people threw this our brother into the fire that the fire consumed i pray every hand that want to do you harm that arm will be paralyzed anybody who want to throw you inside fire fire will consume them anybody who have dug a pit and said this one is for your destruction they are the one who will fall into it as I said, unfortunately, the enemy they were consumed by their own fire. And when before they got inside the fire, our Lord Jesus Christ had been waiting for them. Hallelujah. Amen. I say, Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know what you are passing through. The Lord Jesus Christ is waiting for you right in that problem. Amen. And when Jesus Christ is there, that problem can never touch you, Amen. that fire can never burn you. And, you know, when they got there, the only thing that that fire could burn is what? The property of Nebuchadnezzar, the rope. All the rope of Nebuchadnezzar got burned. But my brethren, they stood up and Jesus Christ was with them. The whole place changed. Maybe they have, not had, they have never invented AC at that time. But that place would be as cool as AC room. God will calm you in time of trouble. In time of stress, maybe some of you now, especially this time when things are hard and harsh. Yes, things may be harsh, things may be hard, but the Lord will preserve you. The Lord will surprise you. Later, Nebuchadnezzar said, what is happening here? He saw people moving inside fire. Where are you? God will use you. To surprise your enemies. The man said, Ah, I thought I was sitting at Meshach Abednego. What is happening? I'm seeing four people here. The fourth person looks like the Son of God. Yes. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He said, I am with you always. I pray in time of trial, the Lord will be with you. You will not be alone. I said, You will not be alone. Later, Nebuchadnezzar said, we are just wasting our gas. We are just wasting this fire. Please, quench. let's quench this fire. Shedrach, where are you? Come out here. And they moved out. There was no trace. I pray, no matter the evil your enemy might have done, there will be no trace. Maybe they thought they have finished you now. You are coming out. You are coming out gloriously. You are coming out with testimony. This, the faith of our fathers. Faith of our brethren. God wrote this thing down for us so that we can learn. So that we can know that he is alive. And let's go back again to that passage. You see, is it not only subduing kingdoms, not quenching only the fire, escape the edge of the sword. Escape 
the edge of the sword. I think you can remember that man that is called Goliath. Goliath was equipped with what? Armor and a sword there. And David challenged him. I can see David here. David, where are you? David, where are you? Yes, you are representing your family. Maybe there are forces, there are powers of darkness, marine powers, those idols, occultic power that have been challenging your families for many years. One evil has been happening in your family, they normally die prematurely. It's coming to an end today. Because a David will slaughter that giant. Maybe there is a particular sickness, we call it insanity, that has been in your family for long, or poverty, or barrenness. Whatever may be that giant that has been reigning there, David is coming this day. Yeah. Hallelujah. I say, David is coming up today. Yeah. You are that David. You are the one who will destroy the works of the devil. And come and see David when he came. Ah, the man looked at him. This one has nothing. He doesn't carry sword. Does Is this small boy? <laughs> Maybe they may also look at you and say, "Ah, ah, you, you, you are challenging me." Don't worry. It's not you. It's the Lord that is challenging them. And then he said, "I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts." <laughs> That is it. The Lord of hosts, the Lord of battle. And God took over his battle. And what happened at the end? That man with all his armor, with all his sword, fell down. Your enemy will fall down. Any power that have been operating, there may be ancestral forces, ancestral witchcraft, in the name of Jesus, they will fall down before you. And the man... The sword, the sword of Goliath was the one, is the same sword that David used to cut off his head. Lest God will use you to put an end to the shame in your family in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's look at another thing again that true faith they did in those days. Today, I said, Today is your day. I said, Today is your day. Stop the mouth of the lions. Hallelujah. Amen. Immediately I say lion, I know your mind will just say, Daniel, you are correct. Daniel, righteous man. Daniel, faultless man. Daniel, a man of purpose. Daniel, a man of God, a prophet of God. The enemy thought they have, you know, set him up. Every setup in the witchcraft cohen, every setup in your place of work, every setup in the village, any setup against your life, God will disappoint them. Some people are not here. Maybe they are, they, are, they are in another world. As we are saying, amen, they are busy doing other things. I say the Lord will disappoint your enemies. Set up. Maybe they are planning against you now, say, we are going to kill him, we are going to kill her, and they are sending arrow of death through dreams. Oh, they are failed. They will drink their own blood. They will eat their own flesh. Every arrow called cancer, any tumor they have set in your body, the fire of the Holy Ghost will consume it. The lions, witches, wizards, it's not your blood that they will drink. I say, you are not food to the lions. You are the masters, master of lions. The lions have been hungry, truly. The lions have been dead, truly. But immediately their master got there, all of them look calm. <laughs> What, you know, what have been killing people in your family will respect you and be calm. What have been consuming them for many, many centuries, when they see you, they will calm down in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Immediately Daniel got there, there was calmness in that place. Calmness. But unfortunately, when their enemy, before their enemy got to that same lion's den, they were finished. Your enemies are in trouble. Because no weapon formed against you that shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise up against you shall be condemned. That is, this, that is the word of God. You can see that one in the book of Isaiah. If you want to read that one, you see Isaiah chapter 54 verse 17. No weapon formed against thee that shall prosper. That is the word of God. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment shall thou shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servant of the Lord and the righteous and their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. You see, we can be taking that one after the other. I told you number one, subdue kingdoms. Number two, quench the violence of fire. Number three, escape the edge of the sword. Number four, stop the mouth of the lion. And then number five, we are going to stop because of our time in number five. There are still very, very many there. What do they do? Raise, dead race to life again. Dead race to life again. Dead race back to life again. I say dead race back to life again. These are mothers. Where are our mothers here? You mothers that are listening to me on the internet, listen. You will not just be ordinary mother. You will be a true mother. Mothers that will not take no for an answer when they are praying. Mothers that will not give up. The same thing also applies to our men. The same thing also applies to our young boys and girls. Those of you who are here this morning, you are not receiving no for answer. God will definitely answer your prayer. Amen. Let me show you the picture of what I'm talking about. Are you there? Open your Bible to 2 Kings chapter 4. 2 Kings chapter 4. 2 Kings. Be very fast. I want you to see this picture. You see, I want you to be like this woman. Hey, this is a woman that will say, no, I'm not leaving you, Lord, until you bless me. That was it. The prayer of Jacob at Jackpot also. You see, that man said, where, where, where am I going? I've, you know, he's all the children and the wife they have left remaining him alone and with god yes you must find time to be alone with god that nothing is going to disturb you. when you are alone with god you say god i'm not leaving this place except you bless me except i get this miracle except i get my baby except i get my husband except i get my miracle my my job or i got breakthrough you must be that type and say lord i'm not allowing you to i'm not i'm not god you i'm not you, you i'm not going to leave you except you anoint me with your power that should be the children of god are you there now in that second king chapter 4 i take verse 30 and the mother of the child said as the lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, i will not leave thee <laughs> and he arose and followed her i love this woman this is the shamanic woman and elijah the prophet where even, even the servant of the prophet wanted to say, Are ah, you this woman? Get away from this. Ah, <laughs> you, you can't uh, me leave this man. I'm not going to leave this man. This man must, my child must not die. I told him that time that, hey, Are you sure you are not deceiving me? He was the one who said so. And this woman held to the left. Later, <laughs> oh, this woman, God will bless this woman. Ah. Uh, I thought, I thought our women would say amen. The same thing you too. When you go to the Lord in prayer, hey Lord, I'm not leaving this place. Off your phone. Take the phone away. Anything that will distract you, lock the door. And say, God, I must get answer. I must get answer. I'm not leaving this place. That is the type of life we should live. That is the type of a man of faith, a woman of faith. That will not leave God until God will do something. And this woman, and that man has no alternative. This man of God has to follow. He has to follow, followed her and say, let's go. Took the man of God to her house. I pray 
you will hold God. You will be like that woman in Luke chapter 18 that will never take no for an answer. That will always go to that judge and say, are you not going to answer me? Are you not going to take a, a, a vengeance on my enemies? The king, the judge rather, though he doesn't fear God, he doesn't fear anybody, he's a freelancer, a free thinker, but he saw the consistency of the woman. I pray God will see our consistency. I thought somebody would give me better amen. When God said every day he knows where you normally call his name, that you have a place of prayer in your house, in your place of work, in that your shop you have a particular corner there, you normally stay there and pray. He knows that at 9 o'clock you are always there. Ah, heaven will do something. When God knows that 12 midnight you are the one that will always knock and say, God, good morning. Hey, this is another day. And you repeat again and say, God, this problem must come to an end. The devil cannot continue to molest and embarrass my life. You say, spirit husband. Who is that spirit husband that will come and touch your body, the temple of the Holy Ghost? When you hold to the hand of God, that spirit husband will catch fire. Who is that devil? Who is that witch or wizard that will say, it's your house? When you are a man, a woman of prayer, I pray things are going to change from now. You will not allow the devil to be embarrassing you again. This woman said, no! My child must come back to life. And today I pray, any dead thing in your body, your dead womb will receive life. As a man, you have married for many years, you cannot function again. The power that is making your body not to function, I destroy that power. And I pray now that the Holy Ghost will strengthen every part of your body. Your dead organ will come up in the name of Jesus Christ. That is prayer. And what happened at the end? Let's see what happened at the end of the day. Are you there? Are you still there? Second Kings chapter 4, I read verse 35 and now verse 37. Then he returned and walked in the house to and fro and went up and stretched himself upon him and the child sneezed seven times and the child opened his eyes. <laughs> Your dead child will come out. Your dead body will come out. Your dead finance will come up again. I say your dead business will take life again. Anything that is dead today, they will receive life in Jesus' name. Are you still there? In verse now 37. Then she went in and fell at his feet and bowed herself to the ground and took up her son and went out. That's what that is what she was looking for. You will get your miracle in the name of Jesus. Tell yourself, I am getting my miracle today in the name of Jesus. That is it. We swallowed Jonah. That same way, after prayer, vomited Jonah. Whatever has swallowed you, we vomit you again. Yeah. Yes. The enemy kept Peter in the prison, hoping to kill him after Easter. Yes. Anywhere they tie your life in the name of Jesus, you are coming out. Yeah. All the bodyguards that have been assigned to be washing your life, they will go asleep. Just believe God today. We go to point number two now. The operation power of faith through righteousness in God. Let me tell you, I repeat again, the operation, the operating power of faith through righteousness in God. Let's read Hebrews 10. Hebrews 11, 33. Who through faith subdue kingdoms wrought righteousness. Wrought righteousness. Wrought righteousness. Righteousness. If you add it to faith, 
That is great power. With righteousness and faith together, miracle is the result. And today, God will wrought righteousness in your life. Righteousness gives faith power to operate smoothly unhindered. Righteousness is by faith, as I told you earlier. You have read it in the book of Proverbs. Righteousness exalts a nation. I think you have read it before. And, it's a, and sin is a reproach to any people. Righteousness will exalt you. We have seen men, great men, and women in the scriptures. The true righteousness. They did great and mighty things. That is why for your faith to be powerful, for your faith to do great and mighty things, you must live a holy and a righteous life. You remember the promise of God in the book of Luke chapter 1 verse 74 and 75. Open your Bible quickly. Don't forget, I told you, holiness, righteousness is legal ground for answering prayers. Are you there now? 74, 75, that he will grant unto us that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without what? Fear. Without fear. Don't serve God with fear. If your life is not clean, you'll be serving God with fear. If your life is not holy, if you are not living a righteous life, when you hear that Jesus is coming, you'll be afraid. If you hear that rapture can take place, you say, oh God, don't come now. Because your life is not right. But I pray for you today, you'll be free from fear. You will serve God without fear. What follow after that? In holiness and righteousness, all before him, all the days of our life. That is how God wants you to live. Faith one side, righteousness the other side. I will tell you a man, when that man, when God sent a messenger to him that he was going to die, the man said, Lord, look at my life. Let's see it in uh, Isaiah chapter 38 from verse 2. This man was able to talk, was able to pray. He prayed with all his heart and said, God, why should I die now? I don't want to die now. You will not die now. Hey, I say, I shall not die now. The psalmist told me, I shall not die, but live to declare the works of God. I don't know whether this man read it. That was why he claimed it. You also, you are too young. I think I'm talking to somebody. I say you are too young to die. We don't have old people here even this morning. Anybody over 80, 90 here, can you raise up your hand? You are over 80, you are over 90. Raise up your hand, let me see you. We just greet you. We just want to just appreciate you. And nobody here. So all of us are still very young. Okay, we have 180 there. Or 170 there. Okay, none. So all of us are still young. You will not die. You will live long. You will live a fulfilled life. Yeah. Open your Bible to that second chronicle. Okay, let me see, take it now. In um, Isaiah chapter 38, I take verse 2 to 5. Then Ezekiah turned his face after he heard that he was going to die. 
Maybe also you are there. Maybe your doctor told you that you have a few days to live or a few months to live, that you will soon die. But I'm telling you, in the name of Jesus, I cancel that death certificate. Yeah. Reject it. Say, doctor, <laughs> with due respect, I cancel that. That is not my portion. I say that is not my portion. It is not my portion. As a kaya turn his face. He also is saying, that is not my portion. It's true you are a prophet of God. It's true God has sent you. But I know, Lord, I respect you. Would you respect daddy? But I don't want to die now. I will not die. He turned his face toward the world. And prayed unto the Lord. And said, remember now. Oh Lord, I beseech thee. How I have walked before thee in truth. And with, what do you see in your Bible? A perfect art. And I've done that which is good in thy sight. And Ezekiah wept so. You will see this man. He knows his right. No man have ever done like this before. In the Bible. Though I told you about that woman. This one is say nobody they have sent death warrant to like this before. The other one I told you was read death. Death really struck. And they removed the arrow of death. This one, the arrow is still coming. Death is still coming on the way. Just like when you go for a particular test, the medical doctor will tell you this one, this is what we have discovered in your body. And the man say, Lord, you remember now, I'm talking about righteousness. You see how I've done everything well? You see how I serve you with a perfect heart? Did God say no? I'm asking, did God say no? God said yes. I remember, that is true. Ezekiah, that you are talking truth here. Yeah. I pray you will live a holy life. You are the one I'm talking. I say you will live a holy life. You will not die in sin. Any pastor that tells you that you cannot live a holy life, you cannot serve God in holy righteousness and holy, even the only promises, the one we have seen in Luke chapter 1, verse 74, 75, is enough. Apart from the one in the Old Testament, the Bible says, He said, I will sanctify you. All the promises in the book of Deuteronomy that I will do this for you. I am the one who will do it. Any pastor, any man of God that says you cannot live a holy life, look at him very well and say you are a liar and leave that place. Even if he has all the anointing. It's because of our holiness and righteousness. It's true that he has saved us. He said, no, that one is not enough. I want the impartation of God's nature inside you. That was why he died. Any pastor now come, any preacher now comes and says it's not possible. Look at him and say, Sorry, I believe in holiness, and that is what I stand for. I'm telling you, I say, I believe in holiness. I'm not hearing you. I say, I believe in holiness. That was the base of this man's prayer. I serve you with a perfect heart. Holiness, holiness, holiness. I serve you. Why will I just die like this? And the man, and you know what God did? God didn't talk to him, God spoke again. The servant, the Isaiah was going, God said, go back. I pray every evil prophecy reverse in the name of Jesus Christ. That's prayer. Prayer of faith in true holiness and righteousness has power. Lifting up holy hands, that's what the scripture told us in the book of Timothy. It has power. Today, the Lord will cleanse you. The Lord will purify you. You will live a holy and a righteous life in Jesus' name. Serve God with a perfect heart. That's the counsel I will give you. And I want you to say it. Profess it. And you are going to live it. I will serve God with a perfect heart. Say it to yourself. 
Say it very loud and clear. Serve God with a perfect heart. Let me show you some people who serve God, but not with a perfect heart. And what happened to them? If you are serving God, you know, with sinful life, with all those dirty type of lifestyle, you will miss heaven, though you get miracle. Let's quickly see the scriptures now. In Second Chronicles chapter 25, I take verse 2. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with what? A perfect heart. What he was doing was right, but he was not doing with a perfect heart. You too, don't just do things. And say we should do it, let's do it. But your mind is not there. Do it with a perfect heart. Now let's see second, the same Second Chronicles chapter 26 now. We read verse 5, verse 7, and verse 16. Second Chronicles chapter 26, verse 5. Are you there? And, and he sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, what happened? God made him to prosper. This was a king. Let's, what, let's see what happened to him now in verse 7. And God helped him against the Philippines and against the Arabians that dwell in Gaba and Mehunims. Verse 16. But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction for he transgressed against the Lord his God. And went into the temple of the Lord to burn incense upon the altar of incense. This is, this is another person again now. This is a king. And that is the life of many people. You see, when they are poor, they will follow God. But after God has blessed them, they will say, God, bye bye. They will not come again. How many people have come here that God has blessed? How many people have come here that God has lifted up and made them great? But after they have received miracle, you don't see them again. They say bye bye. Your own will not be like that. Am I talking to somebody? I, I say your own will not be like that. Keep on. After God has prospered you, keep on. What God has given to you, don't let it become idol. The baby, God is going to bless you with children, but do not allow these children now to become idol. God will give you wife or husband but don't turn this your husband or your wife to become your idol that will hinder you from making heaven now we are praying for you that by the grace of God you will definitely travel some of you want to travel out to go and study to go and walk over there because it's a greener pursuit as the Lord is leading you and he opens the way and you get there don't forget God after God has prospered you continue to do what? continue to follow him and serve him and follow him and I'm telling you the more you serve him, the more blessing for you. Hey, give me better, amen. I say, give me better, amen. Don't forget, faith and righteousness, they work together to give you your miracle, your breakthrough, and your relations, sweet relationship with God. Keep that relationship as the Lord will establish you and bless you in Jesus' name. Let's quickly go to point number three before we pray. Point number three, the operational results of faith in God. Now let me tell you, the operational results of faith in God. When you have faith in God, what is going to be the result? He is the result of our forefathers also have gotten. You will even get more. I will get more. Look at me. I say, I will get more. I will get more miracle than my forefathers. Yes. Let's go back now again to that our passage. You know that passage very well. What is that passage? Is Hebrews chapter 11, verse 33. Are you there? To 35. Who, who through faith subdue kingdom. I can see you today. You are going to subdue kingdoms. I will subdue kingdoms. I will subdue nations. Because the power has been given to us. That is a miracle. 
That is what you should be expecting. I can just get yourself ready. Just be getting ready now. Those kingdoms that are troubling your life say you are in trouble today. All those nations, all those kingdoms, all those powers that have been troubling you, troubling your family. Just be getting ready inside you now. Start doing what? Prepare it. Start inside your heart over there and say you are in trouble today. Am I talking to somebody? I say your enemies are in trouble today. The kingdom of witchcraft are in trouble today. And that, that uh, marine powers that your grandmother served because you are not serving uh, marine, they are now troubling you. Today, heaven will trouble them. Yeah. I can see you setting fire on their altars. Yeah. Are you dead? I say, are you dead? Subdue kingdoms, wrought righteousness. Yes, I know you have been praying. This morning, you are going to pray in righteousness, holiness. Ah, you're not saying that. I say righteousness and holiness in your life in Jesus' name. Doesn't stop there. Obtain promises. All the promises of God for you, they are yea and amen. They will be fulfilled in your life. Some people are tired of carrying blessing. No. I say they will be fulfilled in your life. You remember what God promised Abraham? Chapter 12. Go and read your Bible when you get to Genesis chapter 24. God blessed Abraham in all things. All that God promised him came to pass. I'm seeing somebody, all the promises of God concerning you will come to pass. I say those promises will come to pass. Just get ready this morning and be writing those promises down. When we start praying and you say, God, do you remember that one? You say that none shall be barren in the midst of you. You remember, you say, God, do you remember that one also? Say, whatever I lay my hands upon, I shall prosper. Do you remember that one also? Ah, say, Christ has redeemed me from the cause of the Lord. You, rem you start reminding him, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You start reminding him, thousand shall fall by my side, ten thousand in my right hand, but none will come near me. You start telling him, and God will say, yes. To you, God will say yes. When you say, when you quote the one, say yes. For you, he say yes, baby. For you, he say yes, miracle for you, healing for you, deliverance for you. Oh God, all to that promises. Let me tell you, the Bible told us in Psalm eighty-nine, verse thirty-four. When God says anything, He will definitely do it. He is the word he, when He's promised you anything, my promise it can never fail. No utter that which is gone out of His lips. Anything God has promised, He will definitely do it, and it will come to pass today. In my life, it will come to pass. In your life, it will come to pass. All his promises, they are yea and an amen. Say, I am a covenant keeping God. He will definitely fulfill them in your life in Jesus' name. Are you ready this morning? I say, Are you ready this morning? I say, Are you ready this morning? Stop the mouth of the lion. You are going to stop the mouth of the lion. I say, quench all the violence of fire. The fire will come down. Yeah. That fire that is burning in your home today, heaven will quench it. Yeah. Escape the edge of the sword. You are not for the sword. The sword will kill the owner of the sword. Yeah. Out of weakness were made strong. Was valiance in, in fight turned to flight the army of the aliens. Do you see here? You see the oppression again. You see, you see that is the, the, the result of faith. That is the miracle of faith. The blessing of faith. When you have faith, what is, what is that battle? Whatever the enemy is, just be looking at the enemy and say, have you finished? Is that all? He bring the storm, you say, is that all? He bring the fire, you say, that all? He bring the sword, you say, that all? Satan, what else again? Bring them out now. Hallelujah. Am I talking to a man, a woman of faith there? I'm, where are they? Where are those people I'm talking about? 
if they are there, where are they? Are they standing up or they are still sitting down? I want you to tell, just open your mouth now and just be blessing this God. And just be thanking him and say, God, I am here today. By your grace, I am taking over. I am taking over today. I am taking over today. I am taking over those nations. I am taking over all those kingdoms. Today, I am taking over all my possessions. I want you to lift up your voice and bless God first. Don't be thanking him. Say, God, I thank you because you are alive. I've heard about the faith of our fathers. You who help them, you will help me today. Open your mouth and thank him and bless him and worship him and magnify him and give him all the thanks and give him all the praise. You are going to subdue kingdoms today. You are going to rot righteousness today. You are going to obtain all those promises. All those promises that you have seen in the scripture. They are all there for you. You are going to apply them. Open your mouth and thank this God. And praise this great God. They die the God they serve. The, the God of Abraham. The God of Isaac. The God of Jacob. The God that can never fail. Yes, that is the God we are talking about. The faith of our fathers. Living still. Despite all challenges of life, the fact of our fathers, he is still there. God can never fail. And God is not going to fail you. I'm telling you, God is not going to fail you. Delay is not a denier. The Lord is not going to fail you. Open your mouth wide and bless the name of this God. And worship him and magnify him. Are you there? Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth and thank him. And worship him and magnify him. Oh, I can can you see the picture I'm seeing? Can you see the great thing I'm seeing before you this morning? I am seeing you as a victor. I'm seeing you as a man, a woman of faith this morning. I'm seeing you like that Shunammite woman and say, God, <laughs> no, today is my day. Today is my day. I'm not leaving this place until I get my miracle. I want you to bless him and say, God, I know you are not going to deny me. I know you. know you this kind God oh I never see your kind oh this kind God oh glory to your name why don't you bless him have you seen the God has ever opened any God any idol that opened the Red Sea for people to pass, not one, not ten, millions of souls with all their properties. Have you seen any God like that? Have you seen a God that opened the womb of over 90 years old woman and gave birth? Have you seen such a great God before? That is the God I'm talking about. Have you seen a God that delivers somebody from the mouth of the of lion? Have you seen a God that said, fire cannot quench this one because this one belongs to me? Have you seen that type of God before? Have you seen a God that have rained manna from heaven to feed a, to feed a nation for 40 years? Have you seen that type of God before? No! That is the God we are serving. That is the God I'm talking about. If you have given your life to Jesus, that is the God I'm talking about. Who wrote righteousness? Wrote righteousness. Abraham was a holy man. When the man was going astray, God told him, Walk before me and be thou perfect. Abraham, don't move out. Stay there. We heard about this man that is called Job. God vouched for him. I know him. Have you seen him? Have you observed him, Satan? That Job is my servant, righteous, perfect man, holy man. I pray God will vouch for you.
Today is your day. Today is your day. That's why you are here. Today is your day. Every spirit of prayerlessness. Why don't you pray that the Holy Ghost will root it out of your life? This prayerlessness in your life, you can't pray at all. You are in the church again, you cannot pray. Something is wrong with you. Why don't you pray that the Heavenly Father will destroy the power of prayerlessness in your life? You can't pray with your wife, you can't pray with your children. You are in the church again, devil, get out. You will pray every weakness. Holy Ghost, replace it with strength. I reject weakness. I reject sickness. I reject infirmity. I reject any type of sickness. Mention them. Diabetes. Hypertension. Arthritis. Cancer. Neuropathy. Spondylosis. Mention them. You that infirmity. You that sickness. Get out of my body. Get out of my life. Any problem you are brought here, why don't you be the time for you to pray? Be the time for you to pray for yourself. May the time to call upon the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Brethren, let's be very sincere with ourselves. I want your prayers to have effect. I want you to get answer. Are you living a holy life? I want you to be sincere with yourself. Are you free from sin? If we just pray and pray and get miracle and go to hell, that is not your portion. If you are here this morning, you know you have been falling, you have been rising, but you want to be free. You want Jesus to help you. You want us also, we want you, you want us to cancel you on how you can live a victorious Christian life. I want you to quickly raise up your hand. We want to pray for you. Give your attention before we go into the real prayer. You want to give your life to Jesus. You want to live a consistent Christian life. Can you rise up and raise up your hand? Let me see your hand up. I want, to, I want you to be singled out. We don't just want to make noise and go. I want you to be a true child of God. Where are you? Raise it up and waiting for you. God bless you. God bless you. If you won't mind, I want you to come to the front before me here. Please come. We want to cancel you, our pastors. We cancel you after the meeting. If you are at the gallery, please come down. Come, 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 come to the front. Of where you are sitting down there, you can come to the front seat there. Come. Come, I'm waiting for you. God bless you as you are coming. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Come, I'm waiting for you. We want to pray for you. If you are at the gallery, you can come down. God bless you. From being sincere, God will honor you today. God will answer your prayers. But if you are there, 
you know you are not free from sin. You are only religious. Why don't you humble yourself? Come to the front so that we can help you. Thank you, Jesus. Wherever you are there, why don't you just bow down your head and say, Lord, have mercy on me. Pray that prayer. Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me. I don't just want to be religious. I want to live a holy and a righteous life. Lord, have mercy on me and cleanse me with the blood of Jesus. Don't force your children. Let them take decision. Have mercy on me. I don't want to be churchy and go to hell. Help me to live a holy and a righteous life. That was what helped that man. Ezekiah the king. He humbled himself. And said, Lord, you see my life? Have mercy on me. Why didn't you also pray for mercy this morning? David, being a king, a prophet, songwriter, composer, a prophet, and a king, he humbled himself. And asked Jesus to cleanse you with his blood. God promised that he will cleanse us with his water. Purify us. Sanctify us. Why don't you ask God? Here am I this morning, Lord. Sanctify my heart. Purify my heart. Give me grace to live a holy and a righteous life. Make sure you are praying that prayer. Help me to live a holy and a righteous life that I will not perish. Help me to draw closer to you than ever before. To follow you all the days of my life, grant unto me that at the end I will get to your kingdom. Your kingdom is the most important thing to me. I want to get to your kingdom. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Give me louder, better. Amen. Are you ready now for the battle? Who come back to with the Lord? Who come back to with the Lord? Who come back to with the Lord? I say. Who come back to with the Lord? And you want to back to with the Lord? Witchcraft battle with the Lord. Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with? If you want to sing, sing very well. Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? I stand. Mami wata batu with the Lord. Marine power batu with the Lord. Oh, come batu with the Lord. Oh, batu with the Lord. Oh, come batu with the Lord. 
has. Amen. I'm going to raise up your voice. I'm going to tell the Lord. Any kingdom, any nation, troubling my life, receive fire now. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and start to pray. Any nation, any kingdom, in the marine, in the witchcraft, any power, wherever they may be, of witchcraft every kingdom of marine kingdom of serpentine spirits receive fire receive fire receive fire receive fire of the Holy Ghost anywhere you are praying from thank you Father hey in Jesus mighty name we pray in your life he'll be smiling at you say look at him you fornicator adulterer you didn't do restitution that's why I say you should get ready I don't want anything to hinder your prayer now God has given you power the prayer you are going to pray now is this Lord I receive the power you have given to me Jesus I receive the power that you have given to me Lord I thank you for the power to root out oh I receive the power this morning Holy Ghost fill me with your power fill me with your power so that I can find the battles of life Open your mouth and start to pray. Receive the power now. Lord, I receive the power. Lord, I receive the power. Holy Ghost, I receive the power. I receive the power. I receive the power of the Holy Ghost to Get my hand to fight, to war, my fingers to fight. Lord, equip me with power to fight, to war against powers of darkness. Holy Ghost, fill me today. Holy Ghost, fill me now for the battles of life. This is not a gentle prayer. Stand up and pray for yourself. If you love yourself, you better pray for yourself. Father, I receive your power. Holy Ghost, I receive your power. Jesus, I receive your power. Power to fight the battle of life. To quench all the fairy dart of the enemy. Thank you, Lord. Holy Ghost, I thank you, Lord. 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 Yes, 
thank you, Lord. Power. I receive the power of the Holy Ghost to pull down strongholds today. I receive the power to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Hey. You will. Power inside the ground, walking against my life. I root you out by fire. Start. Oh yeah, you're going to start. Jesus! I root out every power of the enemy walking against my life. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray. I root out. I root out. I root out. I root out. you out. I root you out from the ground. I root you out from my father's house. I root you out from my mother's house. I root you out. I root you out. I root you out. I root you out. Oh, I root you out. I root you out. I root you out. I root you out. Come out in the name of Jesus. Today you must come out. You must come out. Jesus mighty name we pray it's possible there are some people here their problem is from a particular tree that demonic tree in the village there's something there representing you they are coming out some of you it may be inside the water the power that is troubling your life inside the water they are coming out your own may be inside the ground. They bury something troubling your life. They bury it in the ground for a long time. And it has been working against your life. Today, they are coming out. You are going to lift up your voice. You will speak to the tree. You will speak to the sea. You will speak to the ground. You will speak to any power buried anywhere troubling your life to come out and expire. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. I say, are you ready? Yeah. You are going to call the name of Jesus mightily now. One, two, go! Jesus! Power troubling my life! In the tree, come out! In the water, come out! In the ground, come out! In the rock, come out, come out, come out, come out, come out, root them out, I root you out, I root you out, I root you out in the coven, I root you out in the altars, I root you out, yes, I root you out, I root you out in the name of Jesus, come out and aspire, come out and aspire. Come out and aspire. Come out and aspire. Come out.
come out and expire. mighty name we pray. Job chapter 20 verse 15. Job chapter 15. Job 20 15. 20 verse 15. He has swallowed down riches. He shall vomit them up again. God shall cast them out of his belly. We want to visit Marine Kingdom. We want to visit Leviathan. Are you ready? Number one, we are going to generalize it. You will not die poor. Power that has swallowed your riches must vomit it today. Any wish coven they have carried your treasure to must catch fire. Your property must be returned. Lift up your voice. Serpentine spirits that have swallowed your riches. Today, they will vomit it. That serpent will die. I don't know whether I'm talking to somebody. You're going to lift up your voice. I shall lend you serpentine spirits. Hey. I shall lend you serpentine spirit. I shall lend you serpentine spirit. Release my treasure now. Release my resources now. In the name of Jesus. Release. Vomit. Vomit them. Vomit them. Vomit them. Vomit them. Release. Release. Vomit my resources. Release my money. Release my resources. You powers that have swallowed my riches. Bible said you will vomit them now. Vomit! 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 Vomit them! Vomit them! Vomit them! Vomit them! 
Vomit my certificate. Vomit my baby. Vomit my husband. Vomit my wife. Serpentine spirits. Vomit them now. Vomit in the name of Jesus. Vomit by fire. Vomit by fire. Vomit by fire. Vomit by fire. Vomit it by fire now. Vomit! Powers of darkness. For me, them now. You enemy, whatever you have swallowed, release my blessing now. Vomit them, vomit them, vomit them. Enemy, whatever you have swallowed, vomit them. My kidney that you have swallowed, vomit them. Vomit my kidney! Vomit my kidney! Vomit! 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 Vomit my womb! Vomit my baby! Vomit my baby! Vomit my baby! Vomit my baby! Vomit them! Vomit them! Vomit them now! Whatever the enemy has swallowed, vomit in the name of Jesus. Release. Release, 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 release. Marine power, release your victim now. All you marine powers, I destroy all the marine powers. I destroy all witchcraft oppressions. Jesus, mighty name we pray. I want you to look inside. Look into your life. What are the things that you have been denied? Have you been denied admission? Have you been denied husband or wife or children, miracle children? Have you been denied sound health? Anything that you have been denied, you will tell the enemy to release them now. Are you ready? 
I said, are you ready? Have you been denied promotion? Have you been denied good job? Have you been denied fees? You want to travel off? Have you been denied anything? You are going to pray that your enemy will release that thing now. Are you ready? I say, are you ready? You will lift up your voice and say, Jesus! 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 In the name of Jesus, my enemy, release my blessing now. Release. Release in the name of Jesus. Tell the devil. Jesus, mighty name we pray. Better amen there. Stop the mouth of the lions. Mouth of the lions. Hey. Witches and wizards troubling your life are in trouble today. Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? Yes. I said, are you ready? Yes. Oh, the lions. Yes. Chasing me in the dream. Yes. Dog, chasing me in the dream. Yes. Masculine, chasing me in the dream. Yes. Power that are walking against me in the dream. One by one. Open your mouth and pray. Those animals, those dogs, those masquerade, 
those lions, those he pursuing you in the dream, let them die one by one. Holy Ghost, slaughter them one by one. Holy Ghost, slaughter them one by one. <laughs> slaughter them one by one. Those goats. Those dogs. Anything which is a wizard I use it against my life. Die one by one. All the animals pursue me in a dream. Die one by one. Holy Ghost slaughter them one by one. Consume them by fire. 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 Them by fire. Evil, I reject you. Whatever my heavenly father has not planted shall be rooted out. Amen. The prayer you are going to pray now, we are still talking about rooting out. Some of you in the dream, they have given you food to eat. And since you took that food, you have been having a health problem. Today, the Holy Ghost will root them out. Amen. You just lay your hands upon anywhere that you are having that problem. Just lay your hands there. You are going to speak to that problem. You will lift up your voice. You will say, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Say it very loud and very clear. Amen. Say it better than this one. Implantation of witchcraft. Come out in the name of Jesus. Come out now in the name of Jesus. Come out in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and start to pray for yourself now. Every evil implantation of witchcraft in your head, in your tummy, in your leg. Come out. In the name of Jesus, come out. Evil implantation in your womb, in your brain. Come out. Headache, migraine, come out in the name of Jesus. Fibroid, cancer, come out. Pray that prayer very well. Your body must not respond to evil manipulation. Root out. 
Holy Ghost, root them out. Holy Ghost, root them out. Holy Ghost, root them out. Holy Ghost, root them out. Every evil implantation. them out to pull them down every altar every shrine every kovu where they are troubling your life holy ghost pull them down now open your mouth and pray holy ghost I pull down. All witchcraft altar, marine altar, occultic altars, witchcraft kovu, marine shrine, wherever they are troubling my life and family, I pull them down. And be consumed by fire. Some of you are tired. Some of you are not praying again. Anywhere the sign may be. Anywhere the altar may be, in your father's house or your mother's house, anywhere the altar may be, inside a tree, inside water, in the ground, in the air, in the land, anywhere the altar may be, olive water, where they are troubling my life and family, I pull you down and be consumed by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Jesus name we pray to root out the 
bow down and to destroy. Our time has gone. You are going to summarize everything now. All the works of the devil. All the activities of the devil. All the oppression of the devil. Against my life and family. Lay your hands upon your head. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Destroy the works of the devil in my life. Are you ready? Yes. I'm still going to call that mighty name. In the name of Jesus. I destroy every work of the devil in my life. And in my family. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Pray that prayer, pray that prayer. Pray that prayer very well. Pray that prayer. The works of the devil in my spirit, in my soul, in my body, I destroy them now. I destroy them now. I destroy them now. In the name of Jesus, every work of the devil in my spirit, in my soul, in my body, in my family, in my business. In everything that concerns me, I destroy them now in the name of Jesus. I destroy them now in the name of Jesus. I destroy them now in the name of Jesus. on your head. Still lay your hand there. Still lay your hand there. Lay your hand there. Thank you, Father. Father, we say thank you. You are good. And your mercy endure it forever. Here we come. Believing you this morning. Father, the Bible says Jesus, the Son of God, was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Aha. Today, Lord, we want you to stretch your hands now. Look at your children one by one. Every work of the devil in that temple right now. Yes, receive fire. Yeah. Devil, you cannot touch this, my children. Yeah. Pack your load. Leave their body now. Leave their family now. Yes. I challenge marine oppression and witchcraft. Working against this, my children. Who are you? Mountains. Great mountain. That shall stand before Zerubbabel. 
thou shalt become a plain. Whatever witches, wizards, marine powers has planted in your body, receive fire now. Get out. Yes. Carry your sickness. Carry your sickness. This is the temple of the Holy Ghost. That tumor, cancer in your head, in your brain, in any part of your body, dry up in the name of Jesus. Migraine, insanity. I command you, pack. Get out. Leave them now. Come out in Jesus' name. Fibroid, what are you doing in a womb? That abnormal growth, dry. 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 The blockages in your fallopian tube, I command them to clear up now. Receive strength to conceive. You that man that cannot perform. Every spirit of postrate. Whether postrate cancer or enlargement. Cancer. Postrate enlargement. I command you now to be no more. Every evil implantation of witchcraft. In any part of your body. Come out. Yes. Yes, I say come out. Come out. Yes, come out. 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 Whatever the enemy has planted in any part of your body. The Bible says you are a stranger. And the stranger shall fade away and come out of their hidden places. Anything he has planted in your brain, he has planted in your eyes, he has planted in your neck, in your chest, in any of your organs, your kidney, any part, your heart, every evil implantation right now. Come out in the name of Jesus. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Partial blindness, I command you, come out. Deafness, dumbness, come out. Any enlargement of any part of your body, whether the heart, whether the kidney, I command you to be normal now. Every spirit called insanity, I pray, be sane now. Any problem you are brought here today, I command you problem. Get out in Jesus' name. Be normal. Whatever the enemy has swallowed, serpentine spirit, Leviathan, we have told you, vomit them now. Vomit them now. Their resources, their breakthrough, vomit them now. Their promotion, whatever you have swallowed, the Lord cast them out of your belly. I command Leviathan, you that python, I command your water to dry. Your strength to dry. Whatever sickness they have planted in your body, known or unknown, 
that is manifesting now or that will manifest in future, I command that sickness to dry out. Come out in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord, touch your children. Touch your children. Arrow of death. Ezekiah rejected death. Arrow of premature death. From any cover. Arrow. Come on. Back to sender in Jesus' name. Every generational curse. That they normally die prematurely. That one is not for you. I cancel premature death. Christ has redeemed you from the curse of the law. Every generational curse you are brought here today. Cancel, reverse in Jesus' name. Any power working against your promotion, power that are limiting you, keeping you in the same spot for years, every chain of limitation, break asunder in Jesus' name. Come out. Come out. I say, come out. Whatever the enemy has kept you, no. No. I said, no. I said, no. No. Come out from limitation. Come out. The cage where you are kept, I break that cage. Oh, power that are monitoring your growth, your promotion, resisting your growth and promotion. I come against that power. You, that power, overcome you by the blood. I set you on fire. Every chain, every dungeon, anywhere they kept you, fire consumed it. Come out in the name of Jesus. Come out of poverty. Come out of pain. Come out of sickness. Come out of evil. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out right now. Be free. I said be free. In every area of your life, be free. God bless you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.